Welcome to section 10.10. .10. Okay, gentle people, up until now, what we've been talking about is delta G naught. So remember what the naught means. The naught means I'm under standard conditions, and that means everything is one ATM worth of pressure, and if anything is dissolved, it is at a concentration of one molar. Let's go ahead and say that you are running through this reaction right here. And let's say you weren't at one ATM worth of pressure. And this is going to be a common occurrence because not all reactions are going to be under standard conditions. So how are you going to evaluate if this reaction is spontaneous or not? Well, what you want is delta G without the not. That means I'm calculating the free energy of a system that is not under standard conditions. Now to do this, what I'm going to invoke is the reaction quotient Q. So just to remind you, at the beginning of this quarter, we talked about Q. This is going to be products over reactants raised to the stoichiometric coefficient. So this would be the Q for the reaction above. Now what we can do is we can use Q to evaluate the delta G of our reaction. Now I'm going to give you this equation on your information sheet. The derivation of this is beyond the scope of this class. But let me explain what it does. I'm going to find delta G. And that means that it can be at any concentration and any pressure. And delta G is going to be based off delta G naught, where everything is under standard conditions, which you have data for in the back of your book or on tables. Now added to this delta G naught is this term right here, RT ln Q, where R is our gas constant, T is the temperature in Kelvin, and then ln the natural log of Q, our reaction quotient. So the idea here is this is kind of a fudge factor. It tells you how far apart delta G is from delta G naught. This thing in the box helps you go away from standard conditions. So with that said, let's go ahead and practice this quiz question out. All right, gentle people, what we see in this quiz question is that we have pressures of 5 ATM and 3 ATM, so we're not under standard conditions. If we're not under standard conditions and we want to interpret the Gibbs free energy, we're going to write down the equation delta G equals delta G naught plus RT ln Q. So let's go ahead and take each one of these parts and try to evaluate them. So for delta G naught, what I can do is I can look in our table and we can use formation reactions to calculate this out. So I know that my delta G naught is a reaction and it's going to equal the summation of delta G's of formation of my products minus the summation of my delta G of my formation of my reactants, all under standard conditions. So let's go ahead and look at our products. So the only product that I have is methanol. And so there's only one thing of methanol, so one times, and the delta G of formation for this is negative 166. So from that, I'm gonna subtract my reactants. Now my reactants, the first one I have is carbon monoxide. There's only one of them, so one times negative 137. Now hydrogen is in its elemental form, so remember that that delta G of formation is going to be zero, so I don't have to include it into my equation. If I go ahead and do this calculation out, what I will get is negative 29 kilojoules. All right, let's go ahead and evaluate Q. So Q is going to be products over reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficients. So my product is a liquid. And remember, liquids and solids get one. On my reactant side, I have the pressure of carbon monoxide times the pressure of H2. Now, since hydrogen has a coefficient of two, I have to square that pressure. So this is going to be equal 1 over 5 ATMs times 3 ATMs squared. This gets me 0 0.0222. 
All right, let's go ahead and put all of this together. Delta G equals delta G naught, which we calculated as negative 29 kilojoules. Now I'm gonna go ahead and times this by a thousand so I can write just negative 29,000 joules. And the reason I do this is the next part of my problem. I'm gonna go ahead and put R. Now R is our gas constant and I want the gas constant that uses joules because that's what energy is measured in. And so I wanna keep consistent. And that's why I changed that 29 kilojoules into 29,000 joules. So this is 8.3145 joules per mole per Kelvin. Now I'm gonna go ahead and times this by the temperature. The temperature here is 25 degrees and I'm gonna add 273 to it because I want this in Kelvin. And then lastly, we're gonna take the natural log of our Q, which we just calculated out to be 0 0.0222. Now, if I go ahead and run this calculation out, my delta G is going to be negative 38,000 joules. Now, I'll let you know, delta Gs are usually measured in kilojoules. So let's go ahead and divide that by 1,000. And this becomes negative 38 kilojoules. Well, I hope that made sense. And remember to stay safe, Chem1B.